Hey, what's up coders? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have Hill with me. Thanks for coming on my channel, Hill. Thanks for having me. Nice to be here. Would you like to share a bit about yourself? Uh, sure. So, I guess briefly, uh, since I probably go back, but uh, I studied sociology in school and economics, but I've always been a kind of a geek about coding. Uh, and then I think I got a real job in sociology and mediation and realized uh, I'd rather be programming. So I started coding uh, professionally. Uh, and then, yeah, I've worked for a startup uh, for most of my life. Um, and then I mostly spent time in New York and then a few years ago moved to Israel, which is where I live now. Uh, yeah, my main job now, I co founded a company called Invoice Ninja, which is an open source online invoicing platform. How did your journey start with Flutter? Question. So, uh, Invoice Ninja was mainly a web application. Um, so I spent about three years, two or three years developing the application. At one point, we got an email randomly from someone saying, "You guys need a mobile app." And they offered to build us a native Android and iOS app. Uh, but we had this kind of classic problem where I would add one feature in the web app, and he didn't have to add the feature twice in both of the native apps. Uh, and I was full time; he was part time. And we ended up really compromising a lot. And we kind of realized about a year ago we needed some sort of cross-platform solution. Uh, and so React Native was very tempting, we really considered it. Uh, but right about that time, we saw the Flutter beta. Uh, and so we had this meeting, the three of us, and we decided to give it a try. And we actually switched roles. So my background mostly is in web. So we switched. The, the mobile developer took over my role as a web developer, and he's working on a new version of the web app. And I took over the mobile platform. Uh, and it's worked out great. So we released the app a few months ago. Uh, very happy with the results. I think it was a great decision. Could you please tell me about your Mudio app? Sure. So Mudio is kind of a pet project now. Uh, it came from Flutter Creates. Uh, so my, my passion really is music. Uh, hard to make a living as a musician. So uh, the idea came about actually through Flutter Create. I kind of wanted an app where I could easily record a bunch of different instruments and kind of put it together. Uh, and so for the submission, I got kind of a proof of concept working. We had a basic app where I could record the video easily and do a bunch of different tracks, so I could you know, like a bass, guitar, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then once that was finished, I had this idea that it would be cool to take that kind of basic concept and apply kind of a GitHub type approach to it. So one user could record, you know, three tracks, save the song, and then another user could take that song and then fork it essentially. Where they could add their own tracks or remove tracks. Uh, and I have two amazing partners who are really supportive and they love the idea. And they agreed to kind of take a month or two from the company's resources and time uh, to help develop the idea. So my partner Dave and Shalom kind of helped kind of turn this kind of flutter, flutter create kind of concept into more of a full app. Uh, so it's more a kind of a hobby project. Not sure what's going to happen with it. Uh, it's been fun working on it. Uh, as you mentioned, both apps are open source. So we can put the, the links in the notes somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's been fun to work on. And I hopefully just kind of nights and weekends kind of keep moving forward. Uh, kind of my focus more is in West Virginia. What was the most challenging feature of this Mudo app? Ah, that's a good question. So, I still, I'm still struggling. The hardest thing for me is the latency. It's critical with audio that it syncs up perfectly. So milliseconds matter. And so making sure we support, on, on newer apps it works great. So I, I have a Pixel 2 I test with, you know, a new iPhone works great. But on older devices, it works, but there's a slight delay that's introduced. And I'm still working on it, trying to optimize to get the latency as low as possible. That's probably been the number one challenge. It's something I'm still challenged by, trying to keep improving, keep improving it. Because uh, I think if we want really larger adoption, we have to support as many devices as possible. Uh, so yeah, that's what I think Could you please tell me about It's All Widget? Sure. So, uh, I think like many Flutter developers, I was really just incredibly excited by using the technology and really wanted to contribute to the community. Uh, so, I think when I first started, uh, my initial idea was to create a podcast. I thought that would be, be a lot of fun. Uh, so, I spoke with Thomas Burkhart. That's a little uh, and we discussed doing a podcast together, and he actually came up with the name, It's All Widget. So it was great, .com was available, we booked it. Uh, but it turned out Simon and Scott, also in the community, were already working on a podcast. So we didn't want to have too many podcasts, uh, but we had this domain, It's All Widget uh, And at the same time, I, I was kind of finishing up Invoice Ninja, or at least the initial release of it, or something, something that I wanted to share, I should say. Uh, and I remember submitting it to the awesome Flutter list. It was an incredible list, and it was rejected, sadly. Felt a bit bad, 
Uh, and it made sense. They kind of felt that it was similar to many other apps, and they really wanted that to represent kind of very, very unique apps. And then Google also had their showcase, which they didn't even want to submit to, it didn't feel confident submitting it to. Uh, so the thought was it'd be great to have a place where anyone could submit an app. That's really why I see at the top is kind of an open listing of, of, of apps. Uh, that's the key concept. There's no judging. It's not, your app doesn't have to be a certain level of quality. It's any app you've created and you're proud of, it's a place to, to, to show it. Uh, so we had the idea, we started developing it, built the website, released it. We had an amazing response, and I think in large part, thanks to the incredible support from Google. They really were excited about it. Uh, and at one point, they added a link from their site to our site under the showcase page. And that, from that, the traffic just tripled overnight. And it's been amazing. It's been really cool to see all the submissions. I love it. I really enjoy it. And now it's kind of finished. I just kind of, uh, I don't I'm not really adding more features. But it's just nice seeing the, the listing continue to grow and see new apps getting added. Um, you know, the one thing I would like to add is I think there's maybe a lot of cool data there. Maybe we start doing things like uh, monthly reports to share statistics and differences between what apps are Android, iOS, uh, countrywide stuff, uh, kind of general demographics, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, but it's been a great project to work on, a lot of fun. Uh, All right, your thoughts on state management? State management. So, uh, if you listen to the podcast, I asked that question. I've asked, and at this point, 25 episodes. What are your thoughts on state management? I've never answered it myself. Um, it's a couple of thoughts. One would be, I think, the sense I find is everyone's looking for kind of one answer. What would you want to use? And obviously, there isn't. Um, personally, I think it comes down to a combination of both the app itself, but also the app developers. I think developers have different mental models, different backgrounds. If you're coming from a React background, Redux may make a lot of sense. Um, that's one idea. Uh, and then also, I think, you know, state management, I think like a lot of people are deciding now, state management just means how do you build your app, how do you code your app? Uh, again, there are no right, single right answers. Uh, I think it's good to evolve your app, start with simple solutions, start with set state and go beyond there, and then as you need uh, different solutions, add them. And also keep in mind the complexity of the app. Right? Simple apps don't need complex state management solutions. So have a good match between the complexity of the app and the complexity of the solution. I actually just came from the talk that Matt and Philip gave on the provider library, which is uh, really impressive. Uh, so that's something I would like to try. And also MobX to me also looks really interesting. Uh, the one last thing I'll say is my problem now is the first app I built uh, for our company West Ninja is built with Redux. And it's kind of wired my mind to see Flutter with Redux. So Meteor also, I wanted to do it quickly, so I kind of took Redux as what I know. Um, personally, what I'd like to try to do is build, you know, use different approaches. So hopefully I get a chance my next app to try something else and give me a better sense of how they, how they compare. But with other state management solutions, I've, like many people, I've just read tutorials. And I think you really need to use it in an actual app to get a sense, a real sense of how the solution works. Your views on Flutter Web? I am very excited. Uh, I think in large part because my background is as web developer. I have very little mobile experience. As I said earlier, right, I just switched from web to mobile to build with Flutter. Uh, so it's, it's really cool to come full circle and go back to what my roots were. And I've done web for, for almost 20 years now. Uh, so just to share quickly, so our company, you know, we have this big web app we built, it's totally open source, and it's built with Laravel and PHP, and we were working on a V2 of the app. Uh, but now that Flutter Web is here, it seems to make a lot more sense to take what we built for mobile and make that our web app. So we've actually completely changed our, changed our strategy almost overnight, and now rather than building a whole new web app, we're going to build kind of a core web backend with a REST API, and our plan is to take what we've built on mobile and make it both our mobile, tablet, desktop, and web app. Uh, so we're starting on that, literally when I get home from this conference, we're going to start uh, developing uh, seriously. And we're excited. We think it'd be a great opportunity to go from, go from three to two to down to two using Flutter, and now we're going to go from two code bases mainly down to one, a single, single code base, which uh, implements most of the features for our application. Your top three do's and don'ts for Flutter developer. So I got three do's and one don't. Uh, so the first do is something that we did later on, I wish I had done it earlier, is to copy the Flutter developer's analysis options YAML file into your project. Um, it's like linting, uh, and their rules are a bit stricter than the things out of the box. And what we found is, especially I was new to Dart, it really helped kind of guide me with best practices. Uh, and doing it earlier really helps. Doing it, I wish I had done it earlier because the problem we found is that it caused a lot of warning. We have literally thousands of warnings to manually clean up, and I wish I had done it from day one. So if you're starting a new project, definitely consider doing that. Uh, the next one is just to create lots and lots of widgets, even tiny ones. One example I gave is an icon text. It just has an icon next to a text widget. And that way, having it uh, kind of abstracted to these tiny widgets makes it easier. Both if you want to make changes to how things are laid out, you can change it in one place, it updates everywhere. It also makes the code generally a lot, readable, a lot more readable. And the last one I would say is to make sure you're using some sort of server-side error logging, whether it's uh, Sentry or Crash Analytics. Uh, you know, Flutter's amazing in that small errors, even null, null exceptions, won't crash the app. They'll keep running. 
Uh, but the problem there is very often users won't tell you that something's gone wrong. Because from their perspective, it seems to work. It seems to keep using it. Whereas with iOS or Android, a small null error, the whole app crashes. You'll hear about that much more quickly. Um, so if possible, when you're getting started, use server-side error tracking to see if you have uh, knowledge about what's actually failing. And the one don't, I would say, is don't be mean. There's an amazing Flutter community, really sweet, really kind people, be supportive of each other. Thanks, Hill. That was a great tip. And uh, thanks for coming on my channel. Pleasure. And um, I'm going to leave a link of Hill and his work on my video description. Please do follow him. Thanks for being on my channel again.